Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. This is a retro review of an ESS audio drive sound card for DOS. This is one of the better sound cards and it's got the ES1860F chip. So in this video we will go over the card, point out any interesting specifications. There of course are a few audio recordings of the FM chip and the digital speech portion. And we also check out the driver installation, which is actually very user friendly. So if you're a beginner uh, with DOS and you struggle a little bit with getting all the commands right, then this is a really good sound card to begin with. In terms of connections at the rear of the sound card, we've got an audio output, we've got a line input, there's a microphone input, and we've got the game port. But this one also acts as the MPU401 MIDI interface. The sound card is actually very simple. The ES1860 ADF is highly integrated. It can do all sorts of things and there's uh, no need for a lot of uh, external chips. So let's have a quick look at the card. We've got the chipset in the center. We have an IDE interface here for adding, um, connecting a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. And I'm gonna actually connect one and show you how to install the drivers and that actually, uh, it fully works. We've got a wavetable header here. So if you have a wavetable module like a Dream Blaster, you can connect one here. And what else is interesting? We've got CD audio input. So this is where the cable comes from, from your CD optical drive, uh, giving you the analog audio. Very interesting, so these two, they are connected with each other. So it just depends which cable you have. Um, that one didn't work for me. Um, I connected the CD audio cable and I could hear some faint uh, music playing, but it didn't really work for me. So I'm not quite sure uh, what this one is for. Here we have two jumpers. They have to do with the amplifier. Um, there's a little picture here, line out, speaker out. So if the jumper's at the top, um, it disables the onboard amplifier and that's what you want if you're connecting powered speakers or uh, an amplifier for example. Uh, but if you are using passive speakers with no amplification then move the jumpers to the bottom and the onboard amplifier will activate. I'm just going by the data sheet here. So the ESFM chip is quite interesting. It can operate in two modes, in native mode as well as in emulation mode. Native mode, that applies to Windows. So basically, if you've got the Windows driver installed and you're playing a MIDI file, for example, it will actually operate in a mode that is more advanced than a standard Yamaha OPL3, for example. However, in DOS, it will use the emulation mode and it is register compatible with the Yamaha OPL3. It sounds very close. It's one of the better OPL3 clones, if you want to call it that, but it's not perfect. Um, sometimes you get a, a note that sounds a little bit off, but unless you're doing side-by-side -side comparisons or you know a game really well, I doubt that you're actually going to notice a difference. Let's have a listen to a few games demonstrating the FM chip. There will be another video with a lot more recordings, so this one will be a fairly brief demonstration. There are a couple of games out there, for example, Duke Nukem 2 that use the ADPCM technology. This is basically an audio compression codec and a couple of sound cards uh, are not compatible, but this card is. So if you want to play, play some Duke Nukem 2, this sound card will work just fine.
This sound card is also good for older games that have issues with single cycle DMA or normal DMA mode. And the Sound Blaster 16 cards, for example, they have issues and you will hear clicks and pops in games such as Wolfenstein 3D or they have the tentacle if you listen to the uh, digital speech. So this one is uh, free of those clicks. Everything sounds crisp and clear and we will have a listen to some sound examples later. And let's listen to the digital output. For this I muted the mixer for the FM chip so we can isolate just the digital part of the sound card. Mmm, I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> Like I could. Take on the world. Also, what's interesting, if the game has an option for Sound Blaster Pro or ESS Audio Drive, I found that the ESS Audio Drive option is more filtered, which some of you might actually prefer. Right. Let's go adventuring. Right. Let's go adventuring. Right. Let's go adventuring. Right. Let's go adventuring. The MPU 401 MIDI interface on the sound card is free of any bugs that some of the Sound Blaster 16 cards have, for example. So you can connect a wavetable module up here, or you can connect like a Roland sound canvas through the MPU 401 interface here. You just need one of these joystick uh, cables. So bug free, what does that mean? It means you don't get any hanging notes. Uh, for example, in Dumo Hexen, that's a very uh, common issue with Sound Blaster 16 cards. And there's another issue um, if you play, for example, Duke Nukem 3D or uh, X-Wing or TIE Fighter, one of those games, together with digital speech and MIDI, you, get, you might get some pauses in the game with a Sound Blaster 16. Uh, you also don't get that issue with this card. So the MPU for one MIDI interface is very good, it's bug free and this is an excellent card to connect uh, a wavetable board to or uh, run an external MIDI synthesizer. Okay, so let's have a look at installing the drivers. We've got a 486 here running at 25 megahertz and the usual, uh, I'm using an SD card as my hard drive and I've got a little mixer. I'm using this basically as a headphone amp and any of the software, if you're looking for that stuff, check out the links down below in the description. Uh, this is a boot menu I'll put together. I've done a video on that. Basically, it gets you working mouse, optical drive, all the memory options that you need for DOS games. So this is really uh, tweaked for DOS gaming, basically. So we're going to go with this option and we're going to have a look at the drivers. Also, I've connected the CD-ROM drive to the sound card. So that freed up one of my uh, ID connectors on the motherboard. There are a couple of drivers out there and firstly I had a go at using the drivers from the Vogons website. However, at first everything seems to uh, be working fine. However, if you actually want to change some of the resources, um, it just says uh, you've got a plug and play bias, uh, so you have to use ICU software or whatever, and the command line options are ignored. So I actually found much better drivers, and I found them at the on the BTC website. They, um, yeah, they made old sound cards back in the day, and that's got a nice installer, and this is terrific. So if you're a beginner and you're not too comfortable with DOS, this is one of the best installation programs uh, I've seen. So basically you just run install and it asks you what resources you want. So we're going to go with address 220, option 1. We're going to go with interrupt 7, option 3. We want DMA channel 1, which is option number 2. We want the 
MPU 401 into interface on address 330, so option number 4. We want a joystick, yes, so we go with option number 2. Now it asks us for the optical drive, and in my case, um, you have to try out a few options. Um, uh, what happens is if you choose an option and the resources don't work, it will just hang, so you might have to try again. So in my case, option number uh, 2 worked. And then for the interrupt, for the uh, ID controller for the optical drive, option number one, which is interrupt 10. It lists all the specifications. Are these settings correct? Just press Y. And it asks us to enter a directory to install the drivers. So I'm going to put them in C slash um, e ESS1868. Does not exist. Do you want to create it? Yes. Off it goes. And now we just have to reboot our machine. There you go. That's all running. So here it actually enabled the ID uh, controller. We'll have a look at the configs and the auto exec batch file later. It loads the CD driver. Um, but this is part of the um, startup files package of mine. It, it loads the driver for you and then we've got two lines here one is to set the resources and the other one is to set the mixer and we're going to have a look at that so let's type in edit and we're going to open the config sys file also it backed up the old config files into config triple uh, zero and auto exec triple zero let's have a look at config sys first all this does is turn on the id interface so if you don't need the id interface on the sound card get rid of it. Um, here you can type in the address. So 168 was the one option, the other one was uh, 1E, uh, whatever. I'll put it on the screen. And here you can choose the interrupt. So there are three options. A is interrupt 10, B is interrupt 11, and C is interrupt 12. And you just have to try them out. In my case, uh, interrupt B and C, the machine uh, froze. So interrupt A worked for me. Now let's open the auto exec batch file and let me just grab my mouse there are a couple of things here the first one that initializes the card with the resources this is the address 220 interrupt 7 dma1 midi mpu41 address 330 and joystick is enabled and you can just change things so if you want to have an interrupt 5 just put a 5 in there if you want to change the DMA, which I don't recommend, you should leave it on one. If you want to have the MIDI port on 300 because you've got a second sound card, whatever, you can change it. And if you want to disable the joystick port, just do it like that. But I'm going to put everything back. So these are the recommended settings. There are some games out there that look for Interrupt 7 and you're just increasing your compatibility. Next up is the mixer. The mixer settings go from 0 to 15. This is the master volume. I uh, usually I go for three quarters, so something around 12. L is the line input. If you're not using the line input, I recommend muting it. Otherwise, also set it to 12. I'm going to mute it. Um, w is wave or the sound blaster, digital sound effects, speech. Also set that to 12. M is the microphone, setting that to zero, muting this. CD, that's the uh, CD input also put that to 12 because very likely you've got an optical drive connected to your sound card and s is the synth it's basically the fm chip also set that to 12 and a is the auxiliary b input this is actually the wavetable port yeah so if you've got a wavetable header you need to turn this up by default it is muted but we're not going to test wavetable today so i'm going to mute that and the reason we're turning off microphone and uh, wavetable these can pick up additional sound and noise and press save and that's it restart your machine and all these settings uh, should 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 apply now so let's wrap up this video let's talk about the positives first cheap easy to find on ebay very clean sound I listened with headphones and listening at a comfortable volume level and then quitting the game, I could not hear any noise. It's uh, free of clicks and uh, pops. It's got a bug-free MP401 interface compatible with the AD PCM standard. In some games, you can choose Sound Blaster Pro as well as the ESS audio drive 
options. It's got an ID controller, which is great for a 386 or 480, 486 machine that only has one um, ID channel on the motherboard. The installation is super easy, super drivers, very easy to change the options, options in the auto exec batch files. And under Windows, the ESFM chip uh, has a superior quality compared to the uh, standard Yamaha OPL3. No sound card is perfect. This one is pretty close, but the only weaknesses I can see is that the FM is not 100% Yamaha OPL3. Uh, it is close, uh, but some of you out there, it matters to you, so that's worth pointing out. And it's not a sound blaster, so the, it's not 100% sound blaster compatible. If you want that, then you need to go with a sound blaster. I didn't run into any issues, but I know that some games out there do not work on this sound card, but the vast majority should work just fine. And there you have it guys, I really like this sound card, I can highly recommend it. But what do you think? Have you used this sound card before? Are you using it? Have you used an ESS audio drive before? What is your opinion? And also let me know what do you think about this video. I actually really enjoy working with DOS every now and then and reviewing sound cards. It's always an interesting experience for me. So if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like, dislike, share the video, the usual stuff. And I shall see you soon with another one.